Now it's my particular pleasure uh, to welcome the Minister of Education, Science and Technology of Kosovo, Arberi Nagavci. Kosovo is very dear to us as was Austria. We have had the opportunity to accompany the brave struggle of this small country for quality education since 1998. And with the help of Austrian funds through the Austrian Development Agency, we are still able uh, to continue with this process. So we are very close partnering as was Austria uh, with the ministry uh, Mrs. Nagavci is representing here. And this brings us also to the national level of a country uh, and the problems uh, which are faced there. But just let me say a few introductory words on Mrs. Nagavci. She started as a primary school teacher and a school principal, but is also a certified trainer in human rights and children's rights. In the Kosovo parliament, she served on the education committee and became the first deputy chairwoman of the assembly before she assumed her current position as Minister of Education, Science and Technology in March of this year. You're most welcome. Please take the floor. Thank you very much, dear Federal President of the Republic of Austria, Mr. Alexander van der Bellen, dear Austrian Federal Minister of Education, Science and Research, Mr. Heinz Fabban, dear ministers, ambassadors, rectors, academics, experts, students. It's an honor for me to take part in this important event and represent the Ministry of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation and the Government of Kosovo. After the hard time that we have with pandemic situation, it is big pleasure to be together in this event and discuss for this very important topic and remind all of us how it is important to work together and cooperate to give in access to the quality education to each children and students. In other hand, it's a big emotion for me to be here in University of Vienna knowing that there are a number of students, boys and girls from Kosovo, that they are studying right now here in this university and in the other universities of Austria as well. I know that most of them used to be a young children during the last war in Kosovo, and now they, are they have opportunity to improve their skills, their competences, and to contribute for Republic of Kosovo and other state as well. So let me thank you, Bus Austria, uh, uh, Austrian government and people of Austria for giving this opportunity and for all the support that you give to Republic of Kosovo and education system in particular. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, from the moment I saw the agenda of the event, I was attracted by its aim and potential that tends to achieve during the conference because it treats education from a human rights perspective and this is something I'm thrilled about. In my address, I would like to present shortly where we are as a country in this relevant file, how we have embraced the human rights education in our legal framework, starting from the constitution and in the end would give a bit of perspective where we are heading. Kosovo is a new country and has comprehensive legal framework in place, which has developed taking into consideration the advice, best practice and lessons learned from more advanced countries. The same applies for laws that tackle the issues of human rights with particular focus on human rights education. The Kosovo Constitution prevents go behind the simple presence and application of the human rights in the Kosovo education system, since they provide equal opportunities to education for everyone in accordance with their specific abilities and needs. This approach by the Kosovo Constitution laid the grounds for a full application 
of the spirit and concrete provision of the international instrument on human rights in specific levels and segments of education in Kosovo. Guided by the constitution or legal framework in the field of the education is in the full line with the human rights principles, universal and absolute, independent and invisible, equal and non-discriminatory, and both right and obligations. In this regard, we have fully embraced the understanding of the human rights education, which can help foster a culture of peace, tolerance and understanding of the diversity in societies, including their religions, ethnic and cultural aspects, and national minorities. Our focus as a ministry and government of Kosovo is to further strengthen human rights education in the primary, secondary and in the higher education. In this regard, the primary goal of our education system is to provide optimal development of the individual, irrespective of the gender, social and cultural background, religion, racial, ethnic or national origin, and regardless of their physical and mental constitution or physical and mental disability. The fundamental values of education in our country derive from the European values, reflecting human rights and the ens uh, ensuing responsibilities, as well the principles of pluralist democracy, tolerance, solidarity and the legal state, equity, autonomy and quality. These principles are reflected in all legislation and other steering documents. In a perspective, when it comes to human rights education, me as the minister and our government will strive for policies that involve three dimensions and prescribed by the Council of Europe. Learning about human rights, knowledge about human rights, what they are and how they are safeguarded or protected. Learning through human rights, recognizing that the context and the way human rights learning is organized and in part has to be consistent with the human rights values, such as participation, freedom of thought and expression. Learning from human rights by developing skills, attitudes and values for the learners to apply human rights values in their lives and to take action alone or with others for promoting and defending human rights. Lastly, I would like to quote a well-known statement that is referred to implementation of the human rights education and which is very relevant for me and my team's work. Human rights can only be achieved through an informed and continued demand by people for their protection. Human rights education promotes values, beliefs and attitudes that encourage individuals to upload their own rights and those of others. It develops an understanding of everyone's common responsibility to make human rights a reality in each community. Human rights education constitutes an essential contribution to the long-term prevention of human rights, abuse and represents an important investment in the force to achieve a just society in which all human rights of all persons are valued and respected. Thank you very much and I wish you a successful day and uh, good results from this conference. Thank you all. Thank you, Mrs. Minister, uh, for this account from your country, and I'm particularly impressed uh, that you highlighted the importance of human rights education as part of the human right to education uh, in your work of the ministry. This is also a, a, an issue where we are cooperating uh, very well and um, where I think uh, Kosovo uh, can provide an example of good practice uh, for others and um, how this uh, can be done. Now, thanks to the time management of our speakers, uh, we are a bit ahead of time, uh, which allows us, first of all, to have a longer coffee break, uh, but also to start a bit earlier uh, with the next panel. In the next panel, we have a number of very renowned experts, and we also would like to discuss a bit afterwards. So 
I would ask you to be back in the room at 11.15 sharp. Uh, I will start quarter past 11. And uh, in this way, we will have, we'll be more relaxed on the next panel time-wise. But now, enjoy your coffee. Thank you very much. <laughs>